Well, hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Heidi St. John podcast. You guys found me right here at the intersection of faith and culture. And today you're in for a treat because Kathy Gibbons is joining me and we're going to be spending the next 20 minutes or so talking about something that is sorely missing in the culture today. And that is, wait for it, critical thinking. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, I'm glad you guys have joined me today. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are. I appreciate the questions that are coming into the podcast here. And you can reach out to me at HeidiStJohn.com forward slash podcast. We just passed 22 million downloads. So thank you to everybody who is sharing this podcast. And this is going to be another one that you are going to want to share because I've got a homeschool mom on the show with me today who is realizing that this, this, this skill of critical thinking is missing. And so she launched a podcast called Filter It Through a Brain Cell. Kathy Gibbons is off the bench and I'd like to welcome her to the Off the Bench podcast. Hey, Kathy, nice to have you here. Thank you so much, Heidi. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's jump into this because you and I have had a heck of a time just getting the technology <laughs> to work today. <laughs> man, like, man, we're praying over that. And yes. uh, I'm going to I'm really excited that you're here. I'm curious to know, because not a lot of people are talking about critical thinking. And we know this because we can see what's happening on the uh, campus of the University uh-huh. of California, Berkeley. What is critical thinking? How did you become interested in learning logic and critical thinking skills? Yes. Okay. So critical thing, let me give you a definition up front because I feel like it always helps to define terms. So we know what we're talking about. Critical thinking is simply the ability to think well about the things that you're hearing and to recognize errors in thinking. I'll also add to that to be able to recognize propaganda, emotional appeals, to be able to recognize when somebody's trying to pull one over on you, trying to feed you a lie, trying to get you to believe or behave. Where were you in the Rona? We could have used this. We could have used some critical (laughs) thinking in COVID. COVID Uh, was 100% devoid of critical thinking. Absolutely void. It's terrible. That was was my moment. This is what got me started in this was COVID. So during that year, 2019, 2020 school year, right? My daughter was in the seventh grade. And part of her curriculum that year was reading this book called The Fallacy Detective. And I was the director for her homeschool class there. So I read the book as well. And the whole way through, I was like, this is amazing. Why did I never learn this? I've never heard these things. And then, okay, so it was spring 2020. That's the year everything shut down, right? All the COVID stuff was happening. Schools were shut down, all this stuff. And I'm starting to see in all the messaging that we're getting and all the the political pundits and the news and just all, I was starting to see all these fallacies. Yeah. And the thing that was, I was like, oh my gosh, it's real. There it is. That's an, that's an ad hominem attack. That's a red herring, all these different things. And my mind was blown. But what really blew my mind was watching these kids. So in the fallacy detective, these kids get introduced to about 30 ish different logical fallacies. And Just from that little introduction to critical thinking that these kids got, I watched them versus their peers who were maybe in public schools, right, and had been sent home and were doing the whole online school thing. And and of course that year, so it's not only the Rona, it's the fact checkers online. And then we rolled right into the good old 2020 presidential election and watching how these kids who even had just a little bit of training in critical thinking went through that time versus their peers kind of blew my mind. I was like, oh my goodness, these kids cannot be fooled. They're armed with just a little bit of skill, a little bit of knowledge on how to think well about stuff. They can't be fooled. They could recognize an emotional appeal. They could recognize relativism like that. And I thought most adults can't do this. If adults could do this, we would not be in the place that we're at right now. And so I I was it was one of those it was one of those moments. I was like, oh, my goodness, we have got if we're if this generation, this next generation that's coming up right now is even going to have a chance against all the propaganda, against all the messaging that they're getting. They have to learn this skill. Yeah. And so here's my off the bench moment, Heidi. This is kind of coming. I love an off the bench moment. Yes. Me. Well, it came from your podcast because shortly after in 2021, 
I was listening to, so I had had this idea, right? Oh, I should teach this. I could do this. Well, and so I had had this idea, but it was just still kind of in my head. And I listened to an episode where you had Dr. Kathy Cook on. And somewhere in this conversation, it was like, she said, or you said, one of you all said, somebody needs to come up with a way to teach the next generation how to develop discernment with the messages that they're hearing. And she kind of said something specific. And it was, that was the God moment. I was like, that's me. I got this. I can do this. (laughs) Like, I love this. I have an interest. So I did. I started the podcast because I thought I want a tool that parents can use. I do short little episodes. Almost all of them are about seven to eight minutes because in my mind, what I want is a parent to be sitting in the car, running to soccer practice, running her kids around like we do, right? When we have middle schoolers and high schoolers that they can put on, they can play in less than 10 minutes, both of them. So we're redeeming two generations here. Both of them can learn how to think critically about things, and then they can have a conversation. And now they have a common talking point, a place that they can start from. So as they see things on billboards, on signs, in commercials, in politics, whatever, they Bill now Mar. have, well, there's, a, there's no shortage of examples. Are, is there? <laughs> <laughs> they now have the language for it, and both of them can have this conversation. And the thing about it is middle school is the ripe years for it. They love to argue. So it's perfect. Let's teach them how to do it. It's so true. (laughs) It's so true. My 12 year old is like every day of my life, I'm I'm getting worn out from it. I'm like, listen, I just gave you a simple instruction. And now we're 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 arguing. We're arguing. Yes. We're in an interesting place in the world right now, particularly in Western culture, because now for generations. We used to teach critical thinking in the schools, but yeah. we don't teach it anymore. And and uh, you have a, a pretty strong argument as to why that's the case. Yes. And, and there's probably a couple different reasons that came to it. But this one that I think is super interesting. So it goes back to Prussia. Back in the 1800s, late 1700s, early 1800s, Prussia, which is now where Germany is at ish, was a superpower with their army. This is how they made their money was they had this incredible fighting army that they would rent out to other countries and other countries would pay Prussia to use their army and they would win. Well, until 1806, they suffered a terrible loss to Napoleon and the king of Prussia is like, this is terrible. This can't happen. If word gets out that my army is losing now, our economy is going to tank. So he had his advisors, he told them, go figure out what happened. Why did we lose? What they discovered was that the soldiers were picking and choosing which generals they were going to listen to and which orders they were going to follow, meaning they were thinking for themselves. And my Ah. husband was my husband was in the army and in the army, they have this saying, salute and execute. Right. For for an army, for soldiers to do. You what don't they, think for yourself. You don't. You get an order and you say, yes, sir. And you go and you execute. So they're like, we can't have people who think for themselves. They have to just be able to take orders and follow it. So he said, OK, figure out what we need to do so that when the young men get to be fighting age, they'll salute and execute. They won't think for themselves. So guess what they guess what they created? They created essentially what we call a what was called a factory model school. They took the kids young. They put them in school all day long. Everything about that school system was designed to create followers and people who would take orders and just obey without thinking such that when they got spit out on the other end, they would just salute and execute. And guess what? It worked. It turned out great soldiers, great factory workers, great followers because great they were leftists. not taught to think for themselves. Yeah. yeah. All the things. Right. And so all these other countries were like, hey, that that looks like a really great idea. We want good followers, too. So they sent representatives to come and study what they had done. And Horace Mann is the person who came from the United States to go over there, look at the Prussian model, bring it back, try to implement it here. First started in Massachusetts and the parents wanted nothing to do with it. They showed up with so, guns so, at the school. So tell everybody, because I've talked about him before on my podcast, but give everybody a really brief, like, remember, guys, Horace Mann is. Well, I, I don't know all the details either, but the thing that I do know, he is the man who brought the modern public school system to ding, the United ding, States. Ding. That's the point. That's the yep. point. And now the stars are starting to align because this guy came over yep. here, starts our public school system and literally strips 
uh, critical thinking out of it because we just want to obey and execute. Yep. They called it the factory model school, and it was based off the Prussian obedience school. How about that? So you can guarantee they didn't have critical thinking anymore because that's not what they were trying to produce. That was not the end goal that they were trying to produce. Now, critical thinking is still taught, just not in the public education system where the elites send their kids to school. They teach critical thinking because critical thinking is what it takes to be a leader. It's what it takes to be able to influence people and to be able to think well, but they don't think us unwashed masses need that, right? Why would we need that? We're just supposed to do what they want us right. to do. Boy, and we're seeing it now. We're seeing it uh, in the streets in mass. We're seeing yes. it in London. We're seeing it in New York yes. City. And I was watching last night. I've gotten to the point where it's just, it's it's so hard for me to to watch the uh, the propaganda as it relates to the war yes. in Israel. And we're actually at a point now where a terrorist organization can, can can invade a sovereign nation and commit atrocities that are uh, right up there on par with the uh, the Holocaust. And we're having to defend why these guys should be able to go in and rid uh, the Gaza Strip of Hamas. And the 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 uh, the propaganda wars are incredible. So I want to talk about it for just yep. a second. How do you define uh, propaganda? Because and I want people to start listening to your podcast. I think it's really important. I'm a huge fan, as you well know, of uh, discernment. Also, you'll notice that there. I think this is maybe one of the reasons why the Republican Party can't get along. It's largely full of people who are critical thinkers because they're not. We don't typically have group think, mm. but there comes a point in which you're like, OK, everybody. Uh, we understand that you're critical thinking, but now we got to at least get on the same page. So we have the same goal. So we got to be driving our independent <laughs> right. thoughts toward a particular goal. And that is yeah. not to have the left continue its hostile takeover of the nation. But I digress. Tell us a little bit about propaganda. How can people spot it? Yeah, absolutely. Let me define. Uh, so I'm going to define three terms. That'll be super helpful. So number one is fallacy or logical fallacy. A logical fallacy is just an error in thinking. Right. Logic mean thinking, fallacy meaning an error. And would you believe, Heidi, there's over 300 named ways that we can think wrongly, that we can make mistakes in thinking. It's kind of it kind of blew my mind when I learned that. OK, next propaganda. Propaganda are tactics that are used to manipulate people both mentally and emotionally. And here's Get the, the shot. Thing. Get it for Every, your neighbor. Do it for oh, your neighbor. You're going to kill grandma. You're going to kill grandma. Right. Come on. You can't go to Thanksgiving is canceled unless you That's get to right. shop all yes. the things, yeah. right? So, so much propaganda. And then lastly is a cognitive bias or a mental bias. And that is a limitation in your ability to think objectively. And now the thing about biases is everybody wants to be like, I don't have any bias. Oh, no, we yes, all do. We do right? yeah. I, the, the way that we have our, our biases is just the way we see the world. For me, I'm I'm a Christian. I'm a woman. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a homeschool mother. These all like I can't not see the world as a woman. Yeah. I can't. Well, not see I mean, the world you can try. Way. You 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 know you what? It, we Kathy, know it's what, not a what, thing. What though. It, what is a woman? <laughs> I mean, honestly, is there is there even can a definition really of talk about propaganda? Boy, the propaganda coming out of the uh -huh. trans community right now is off the chart. Off the chart. Off the charts. Oh, unbelievable! Yes, talk about charts. logical fallacy. <laughs> Yeah. So logical fallacies. So you're, you know, one of the ones is what you're, what you're saying right now. So there's, there's so many of them. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple. So let's just name one. One is called equivocation. This is one of the logical fallacies that is used a lot and specifically in this whole trans agenda that you've referenced. So let's, let's take a couple of them. What is a woman, right? The, the I don't know. I'm so thing. confused about it now. I don't know. I think I'm a woman, but maybe I'm not. I mean, maybe <laughs> You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, how do I know? Yes. So equivocation happens when you change the meaning of a word mid argument, mid sentence or as part of it. So we've always traditionally used woman to mean somebody who is a born human, an female, adult, right? human, born a human female. female. Yes. There yes. we go. It's very simple. Yeah. Well, and my pronouns were equivocated hers <laughs> and she. Yes. Yes. And not playing not that zer. game, right? Those are the pronouns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> zer. So, so somebody equivocates when they change the meaning of the word woman. 
And to the point now that people can't even define it. It's the dumbest. It's the most embarrassing thing to watch. It's so dumb. It actually is. I mean, honestly, Kathy, it's breaking my brain. It's breaking my brain. Yes. I, 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 yes. I, I, I'm like, how stupid can we be? But it's not stupidity. Yes. It's a lack of critical thinking. A hundred percent. You ask these, the, my 12 year olds in 2012 or 2019, 2020. And when they see her, what is the woman? They would be like, well, that's equivocation. <laughs> they know as soon as you give them the language, they know you don't have, they don't have to go through any mental gymnastics yeah. because they're like, well, that's a fallacy. And here's what yeah. it is. And it's the easiest thing. It's done. They're done with it. They don't play the game because they already know that it's wrong and they know why it's wrong. Another one. Love is love. Oh, Heidi. Love is love. Yeah. Black lives matter. That's equivocation. Black lives matter. Right. Yeah. So it's all these things. Here's another. I'll give you another logical fallacy that we've seen in the last couple of years with the overturn of Roe versus yeah. Wade. There is a famous picture that was posted everywhere of this obviously pregnant woman who was showing her pregnant belly and she had written on her belly, not yet. A I human. hate that picture. We saw yes. this. I did a whole podcast okay. on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So <laughs> the fallacy being committed is the moralistic fallacy. A moralistic fallacy says that just because I want something to be true or to be right, therefore it is. So can you see how you can easily refute this? Okay, she wants this person, she wants her baby to not she be She wants a her human, baby to be a so dolphin. Therefore, and so because she wants her baby to be a dolphin... <laughs> Because therefore, therefore, therefore it, it is. is. Yeah. I want to be a yes. man. And because I want yes. to be a man, therefore I am a therefore man. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so just with those two, just knowing those two fallacies, you can automatically pick out so many things and know what's wrong with the thinking behind it. You don't have to, because what you don't want to get dragged into, these are the two biggest enemies to good thinking, emotionalism mm. And relativism. Boy. Those two things. And you just described the entire country in, in a nutshell. Yes. Emotional, emotional exactly. conversations and relativism, right? So it's all and that's what it's all do. relative. And we're all gonna have I saw, I don't know if you saw this, you probably did, but there was a woman on an airplane the other day, and a flight attendant referenced her appropriately as she. And this young yeah. woman lost her ever loving mind. Screaming and like screaming, like someone was stabbing her screaming, like not even words, just screaming. And I thought, and we've arrived. I mean, yeah. when everything is about emotions, yeah. you know, Ben Shapiro famously says facts don't care about your feelings. And that's kind of what you're saying. You know, this emotionalism yes. is we think because we have so much emotion behind something, somehow that makes us more right because we're right. so emotional about the whole thing. Right. Yep. And and the thing is, when you get all when if somebody can control you emotionally, your ability to think critically tanks. And so you have to re like physiologically, it's one of those things in our well, brain. It's like when you lose your kid in the grocery store and you can't all of a you sudden, normally you'd be able to think straight, but whatever this flood of emotion and yes. all of the adrenaline and everything, you can't think straight. Yeah. Yes. Which yeah. is a whole nother. There's all these logical fallacies. It's called an appeal to emotion. So what they do, I'll give you an example. Here's an appeal to pity. If you think back on <laughs> on every commercial TV commercial for an animal shelter. OK, so what's playing in the background? Sad music in the arms of the angels. Right. You've got <laughs> pathetic looking little puppy dogs. Right. And, and the, even the tone and the color of the commercial is like gray and somber. They're manipulating it's, you. They're manipulating your emotions. They're yeah. not making an argument for yeah. why you should send money to help the, the lost dogs. They're manipulating your emotions. And so when you can realize that, you can realize, oh, they're trying to make me angry here. They want you just sad. described the propaganda war that Hamas yes. is pushing out. Yes. They're trying to make people images. angry. That yeah, yeah. Be, and we don't even. And what's crazy is we don't even know where those images are coming from, or right? where they're coming from, yeah, or where where they were, or what part of the what part of the country they were taken in, or even the nationality of the people. We don't know. I right. mean, for all we know, those images are coming out of Syria. They're coming out of Jordan. They're coming out of Turkey. Oh no, uh, we we have been trained in this country to uh, our our minds and our eyes are geared toward whatever images we see come across social media and it is effective. It works. It is. Yes. Yeah. It's working. Ooh. Did you see Xi Jinping? Yeah. Did you see uh, Xi Jinping in San Francisco? I'm serious. Yes. I about 
lost my mind. I uh, I had to take a break. I had to take a yeah. huge break because <laughs> I was like, like I, I thought this <laughs> this is crazy. So here's our government officials, and they've cleaned up the yet one of the yuckiest cities, yes. right? So that a communist dictator can come to our country, and not a single American flag no. is being uh, paraded. As I mean, it's Chinese flags everywhere. Yes. And I was like, and this would be Revelation chapter 19. And today, exactly. today we are living in Revelation chapter yeah. 19, <laughs> when the nation from the North, like people are like, are the United States going to be in, in a Bible prophecy? And then no, right. I don't think so. I mean, right. I, I mean, personally, I think we're raptured and we're out of here. We're not going to be here, but my goodness, my goodness. And the propaganda at that place. Yeah. Uh, off the it's, charts. It's off the ab- charts. absolutely off the chart. I, 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 I mean, oh my goodness, I'm already over time, but this is yeah. such a great conversation. Yeah. I'm super enjoying it. I want to know, well, actually, I'm going to bring you back for happy hour. We're going to continue talking. Um, but before we wrap this up today, you say, and I agree, because I'm a, I'm your new super fan. I agree with everything <laughs> you're saying. Um, you say that life is easier and better for people who can think clearly. Duh. Why do you, why do, you, why do we have to say that out loud, Kathy? We do have to say it out loud. Here's the thing. People, when you have the language and the skill of good thinking, life instantly gets easier because you you do not have to roll on the emotional roller coaster. Yeah. They want you on an emotional roller coaster constantly. If you're exhausted emotionally and you so much so that you can't think right, you can't think rightly, you are very easy to control. Yep. And when you can think rightly, you're not. And it makes it super, super simple. You can see through, you can cut through all the crap that's out there and you can see truth. And ultimately, as Christians, that is our, that's our guideline. Like that's what we're yeah. looking for is we're looking what is true, what is right here. And when you can think well about things, you, you don't get caught up in all the drama. I mean, the blood pressure might come uh, up a little bit sometimes when you see Chinese flags all over in our in our own country. My blood pressure, my blood, it definitely spiked. I was yeah. like, get out. <laughs> like, here's Heidi, you know, yeah. here's Heidi St. John. Get out. Get out. Yeah. Get out of my country. What Xi Jinping, get out of here. What are you doing yeah. here? Oh, I see. You're with the the puppet master. Cause then you saw him walking with Biden anyway. It's a whole, it's a whole big thing. I gotta wrap this up. Yeah. Will you come back for uh for happy hour? And we're gonna continue this conversation because it's I fascinating. Would love to. And people can find you where, because all of my listeners, your podcast listenership just went way up. Where can people find you? I would love to have them listen. My podcast is called Filter It Through a Brain Cell. You can find it anywhere. And if you want, I actually have a quiz. I love, I teach, I have a membership where I teach through memes. I give parents memes and headlines and news articles and questions that they can have these conversations with their kids to practice on real life stuff, because goodness knows that's what they're going to be faced with. But I have a, I have a free quiz uh, if you go to filter it through brain cell.com forward slash quiz, you should take it yourself and have your kids take oh, it. Oh, I'm going to take it, girl. See, I'm going to yes. take it. I'm going to get my little, recognize. my little argumentative 12 year old. Your, your 12 year old is the perfect age for this <laughs> stuff because they love this kind of thing. <laughs> oh yeah. She's going to, she's going to love it. You know, it was funny. Uh, well, anyway, I got to wrap this up. Yeah. I'm already over time. We'll, we'll come back for happy hour. Uh, Kathy Gibbons, just a fantastic opportunity Uh, to have you on the show today. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Heidi, for having me. If you guys are subscribed to the Heidi St. John podcast, and you can do that by hopping on over to Spotify, we're going to continue this conversation in happy hour. And I'm going to find out a little bit more about the lovely Kathy Gibbons. You guys are going to love that. So if you're not subscribed, we appreciate you listening and have a wonderful day. For those of you who are subscribed, stick around for happy hour. We'll be right back.